Hi everyone, this is Gwen and today I'll be showing you how to refashion an oversized blouse into a vintage 1950s style wiggle skirt. If you're new to my channel, welcome! Here on my channel, I share my passion for sewing and all sorts of DIY with the vintage inspired flavor. So if that sounds like something you like, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss a video. Before we start sewing, let's take a moment to have our body measurements taken. So grab your measuring tape, grab a mirror and perhaps a friend and let's get started. First, wrap your measuring tape around your true waist to get your waist diameter. This is a high-waisted design, so your measuring tape should be lying somewhere between your belly button and the last rib of your rib cage. Next, slide the measuring tape down to your hips to get your hip diameter. The measuring tape should be going over the most fleshy part of your bum. And after that, figure out how wide you want the skirt opening to be. If you want a pencil skirt design rather than a wiggle skirt, you can just follow your hip diameter. But if you want to make it difficult for you to walk and have that wiggle wiggle, then go with something smaller than your hip diameter. But please don't make it too tight that you can't walk at all, okay? And finally, figure out the distance between your true waist and your hip line. And also how long you want your skirt to be. I ended up with a skirt that's just slightly below my knees. When it comes to marking and deciding how to sew the fabric together, we will be taking the waist diameter the hip diameter and the skirt opening diameter and dividing these measurements by two. This is because we are sewing both front and back of the pieces together so that the two sides and uh, we only need half the measurement when marking out the stitch line on the fabric later. And before we officially start, I also want to spend a little bit of time talking about the type of fabric that would be perfect for this project. This blouse is made of a very stretchy jersey with a four-way stretch. So if you're thinking about making this skirt, look for something with a very stretchy fabric and good recovery. A good recovery means the fabric goes back to the original state after stretching. Because you definitely don't want your wiggle skirt to actually get stretched out over time. And now we're starting by removing any unnecessary stitches from the blouse. This blouse came with some odd belt loops and some stitching under the arms, so I removed all of that before I started sewing. Next, we're going to turn the blouse upside down. This blouse came with a thick band along the bottom hem and it just worked out to be the waistband of my new skirt perfectly. I didn't even have to actually make any extra cutting or sewing to make the waistband. Now before measuring and pinning the stitch line out, take some time to align and pin the hem together so that the front of the skirt is not going to be higher than the back or vice versa. Now we're going to start pinning and marking out the side seams of the skirt. Taking our measuring tape again, measure your half waist measurement and pin the stitch line in place. I've disregarded adding seam allowance for this project because it's meant to be a tight fitting skirt and the final measurement of the skirt should actually be smaller than your actual body measurement anyway. Next, figure out where the hip line is on the fabric by using your waist to hip measurement. Then using the hip line as a guide, measure and mark out your half hip measurement. This blouse came with a seam in the center and I used that as a guide to make sure that all my measurements are centralized. For example, if my waist is 26 inches, then it's 13 inches to the left of the center and 13 inches to the right of the center. If you don't have a center seam line like this as a guide, you can either draw one or fold your fabric in half again lengthwise and use a quarter of your waist, hip and skirt opening measurements to make sure that everything is centralized. Now we're going to figure out where the skirt hem is going to be by using the skirt length measurement. 
With that sorted out, mark out and pin your half skirt opening measurement. Here is the final thing that we need to do before we hit the sewing machine. Join the skirt opening marking to the hip marking with a straight line. Then work your way up and join the hip marking to the waist marking with the slightly curved line. Don't worry about getting it perfect because we're going to have room for like making adjustments later. Oh hello sewing machine! As much as possible, try to use stretch needle for a more pleasant sewing experience with stretch fabric. I think it's got something to do with how sharp the needle is. I'm too lazy to Google before doing this voiceover. So just trust me, even though I'm not a sewing expert, I'm speaking from experience. Now this part is pretty straightforward. Using a straight stitch and following the line marked out by your pins. So both left and right side seams of the skirt. While sewing, Pull the fabric lightly in the same direction as the stitch line so the thread will be kind of stretchy. I mean the stitching is going to be a little stretchy and the thread won't break too easily when you're wearing the skirt. After sewing, try the skirt on to see if it fits right. And by right, I mean tight. <laughs> when I tried my skirt on for the first time, it was a little big and I had to take it in in some parts to make it fit the way I want it to fit. But it's really okay because we're going to be snipping off the excess fabric. This is so much easier than having to unpick stitches when you accidentally make your skirt too small the first go. And as you can see, I have a pretty self-inflated view of how round my hips are and I had to take it in quite a few times where the curve is. So once you're happy with the fit, trim the excess fabric off the side seams and you can leave just about one eighth of an inch from the stitch line. And now here's a wiggle skirt! But it's just a basic wiggle skirt and if you have a lot of fabric left like me, you can add a ruffle along the hem for an extra ooh la la. So I forgot to mention this earlier but the neckline of the original blouse ended up becoming the hemline of this skirt so I didn't have to do any hem sewing at all but if you do end up with the raw edge where your hemline is, what you need to do is to just fold about half an inch wrong sides together and then just sew with the stretchy stitch and pull the fabric while you're sewing just so that you can still walk in this wiggle skirt with a super stretchy hem, okay? And now we're going to sew the ruffles. To do this, we're going to start by measuring the diameter of your skirt hem when it's fully stretched out. So we're going to take the fully stretched out measurement because when we sew the ruffles on, we are actually going to be pulling and stretching the hem out while we sew and the result of pulling and stretching it out fully while sewing the ruffle on is maximum mobility for a wiggle skirt silhouette. To make the ruffles, we need to get a long strip of fabric that is about 3 inches wide and twice as long as the stretched skirt hem diameter. I did that by joining big rectangular pieces together and then cutting that wide strip of fabric lengthwise in half. Join the short ends of the strip of fabric together and you get a ring. Now we're going to sew a single fold hem for one of the raw edges of the ring of fabric. Do this by pinning about a quarter of an inch wrong sides together and then sew it in place using straight stitches on your sewing machine. 
And from here on, I'm just going to be referring to this ring of fabric as the ruffle piece. After you're done with sewing the hem for the ruffle piece, switch to the longest stitch length that you have on your sewing machine and use that to sew basting stitches along the raw edge of the ruffle piece. Before we start pulling and gathering to make the ruffles, we need to use pins to mark out four points that are equally spaced apart on the ruffle piece. I did this simply by folding the ruffle piece in half and then pinning the ends for both layers. And now here's the fun part, we're going to start pulling the basting stitches gently to gather the fabric and to make the ruffles. Continue gathering the ruffle piece until you think it's as wide as the stretched out skirt hem measurement that we got before cutting and sewing the ruffle piece. Remember, we're going to really stretch out the skirt hem when we're going to be sewing later. Before we start pinning the ruffle piece to the skirt hem, we need to mark out four points on the skirt hem that are equally spaced apart. And once we're done with that, pin the ruffle piece to the skirt hem, right sides together, matching the four pins on the ruffle piece to the four pins on the skirt hem. This is really important because it helps to make sure that the ruffles are equally spaced apart. Once you're done pinning the right sides of the ruffle piece and the skirt together, we're going to get back on the sewing machine. Now remember, we need to really stretch it out when we're sewing using a straight stitch on the sewing machine, sew the ruffle piece to the skirt hem. Now remember, stretch as you sew, stretch as you sew. And here's the final look. final things to note about this project. Obviously, you're not going to be using the exact same blouse that I started with. So if you want to achieve a wiggle skirt that looks really almost like what I have, these are the things that you really need to take note of. Number one, it really worked out for me that the original blouse had a thick hem like this and it just worked out perfectly to be the waistband of my skirt. And number two, I was also really lucky to find a blouse uh, with a length that is exactly the same as the skirt length that I wanted. So this was the hem of the blouse and this was the neckline of the blouse. And with the scoop neckline of the blouse becoming the hemline of the skirt, I've got this really nice scoop on the hem as well. So if you want this scoop, you might have to cut like a little scoop um, if the length of the skirt that you want and the length of the blouse aren't going to work out to be the same like it did for me. And number three, you really, 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 really need to find something with a super, super stretchy fabric. I think that's it. I hope you find this video helpful and I hope you're inspired to recreate something similar and um, hope to see you around again sometime. Bye. Scoop, scoop and stretch.